after undergoing a thyroid surgery and now you have taken a discharge from the hospital and you have reached your home how do you take care of yourself at your home so that you get a maximum benefit of the surgery and minimum pain and a discomfort after the surgery let's find out today namaste my name is dr tanvi mayur patel i am an endocrinologist hormone specialist doctor from mumbai india by the way this is our series of a thyroid surgery videos going on previously i have made videos on what is a thyroid surgery what are the types of the thyroid surgery who all are the right candidate for the thyroid surgery what are the possible complications how do you prevent this complications and how you do a care of yourself and of your wound so that you don't get a scar mark if you have been advised a thyroid surgery make sure that you watch all these videos for your detailed knowledge all right now before i begin this video further let's me just tell you one important thing if you want to watch this video in hindi language then on the i button and in the description box there is a link if you click on that link then this video will be played in hindi language for you अगर आप इस वीडियो को हिंदी भाषा में देखना चाहते हैं तो ऊपर आई बटन पे और नीचे डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में एक लिंक है अगर आप उस लिंक पे क्लिक करेंगे तो इस वीडियो को आप हिंदी भाषा में पाएंगे सो लेट्स बिगिन आर टूडेज टॉपिक दैट इज़ अ केयर एट होम आफ्टर गेटिंग डिस्चार्ज फ्रॉम द हॉस्पिटल सो सी अंडरस्टैंड वन थिंग दैट वेन यू विल गेट डिस्चार्ज ओके सम काइंड ऑफ अ डिस्कम्फर्ट सम काइंड ऑफ अ पेन चेंज इन योर वॉइस डिफिकल्टी इन स्वॉलोइंग इज अ वेरी वेरी नॉर्मल एंड कॉमन ओके सो प्लीज डू नॉट वरी अबाउट इट अंडर सन अंटिल इट इंक्रीजेस इन इट्स इंटेंसिटी सेकेंड इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इज दैट डू टेक द मेडिकेशंस विच इज एडवाइज बाय योर डॉक्टर और अ नर्सिंग स्टाफ एट द टाइम ऑफ द डिस्चार्ज नाउ दिज मेडिकेशन मोस्टली इंक्लूड्स अ पेन मेडिकेशन एंटी इन्फ्लेमेटरी मेडिकेशन देन द एंटीबायोटिक्स सम कैल्शियम एंड अ वाइटमिन डी सप्लीमेंट्स एंड इन सम केसेज इवन द थाइरॉयड मेडिकेशन सो डू टेक ऑल ऑफ दैम अकॉर्डिंगली Another important thing is the medications like that of a diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol. So if you are taking any of these medication, please speak to your doctor whether do you need to change the dosage or the change the timing. So accordingly you follow up. Now many people who have a diabetes when they undergo this surgery, they need to take a little extra precaution. and that extra precaution is maintaining their blood sugar and if a blood sugar is not maintained there are high possibility that this surgery might flare up you might have an infection or the wound healing will not happen adequately so make sure that you control your blood sugar and for that if in case you might need to use insulin that's perfectly fine do use it but make sure that your sugars are in a controlled range Another important thing is that taking a rest. Make sure that you take optimum rest. See, usually after the surgery, you are not advised a bed rest. But however, maximum rest if you take, the healing will be better. Try to avoid any kind of a physical exertion activities like a running or jogging. Again, this will increase your chances of an injury. Talking about the injury, make sure that your wound is correctly placed in such a way that you do not accidentally cause a trauma to it. Now, very commonly trauma happens that's by the finger nail, and if they get stuck, you know it can create an infection. So make a note of that also. Another thing is that when you are resting, make sure that you use at least two pillows beneath your head, or else you can use a head elevation posture. this will ensure a better healing so these are the certain general care which you need to take now we'll talk about a specialized care and that is a care of the pain see so understand that you undergone a major surgery so pain is definitely going to be there however to reduce this pain your doctor might have advised you a pain killing medications okay now this painkiller medicines will usually subside not only a pain but the swelling all your discomfort and the inflammation many people find lot of benefit with the help of a cold ice pack also 
So if you are using a cold ice pack, you can use it twice to thrice in a day, 15 minutes at a time. If you are using a ice, then in that case, make sure that you wrap it in a towel or a napkin and then only you apply it. Do not apply a directly ice on your skin because you can get a cold injury also. Also, if there is a wetness, again, chances of the infection increases. So after cold ice pack, you can pat dry the area. And this cold ice pack will not only relieve the pain, but also reduces the swelling and the redness. So this is a one important care of a pain. Secondly, let's talk about the wound care. Now see, after the surgery, of course, there is a big incision which is taken. And for this incision, you have to take an adequate care. So when you will be discharged, there will be a dressing and these dressings are usually pressure gauge dressing. So you might need to change the dressing. How frequently you need to change the dressing? Again, it depends on individual to individual. So your doctor or the nurse will advise. If you are well versed with the dressing technique, you can do the dressing at home. Or if you do not know how to do it, in that case, you can take a help of a home care nurse or you might visit to your doctor again who can do a frequent dressing. So this is the one part. Secondly, at the incision area, you might see that there is a special kind of a tubing and at the end of the tube, there is a small cup like an area attached which is called as a bulb. Now, what is the purpose of this? So, see from the wound, whatever excess of the blood or any fluid which gets, uh, which gets secreted, all of this gets collected in this bulb. So, your doctor and the discharging nurse might advise you that you need to empty this bulb at least two to three times in a day. And every time you empty the bulb, you make sure that you notice how much is a fluid which is collected. And please make a note of it. And if the fluid collection keeps on increasing, it can be a emergency sign also. So this point also has to be kept in mind. All right. So this is about the bulb care. Third, we talk about the care for the stitches. Now see, there are two types of stitches we usually use. Either we use a dissolvable stitches. So if you have been taken a dissolvable stitches, in that case, you might be up, there might be an application of a skin glue or a paper strip. So this paper strip usually falls off within a week's time and you do not have to actually remove the stitches. But if you have taken a conventional stitches, in that case, within a five to seven days, you might have to go back to your doctor who will remove the stitches for you. So again, it depends on what type of stitches your doctor has taken and can take accordingly. But if, you're, if you are a diabetic, then make sure that the sugars are absolutely in control so that you don't have a wound related complication. Now talking about the wound care after a few weeks of the surgery. So usually within two to eight weeks time, by this time your, your stitches has been removed or they have been dissolved completely. The bulb is removed, the dressing is removed. So now will be the time when you will actually see the scar mark which is an incision. So incision care is also very important. So after, uh, after removal of these uh, stitches and all, you can apply an antibiotic ointment or a soft Vaseline jelly over your scar mark so that it reduces the swelling and the discomfort. Okay. Now, if you are going to go outside where there is a sun exposure to the area where there is a wound, it is always advisable that you use a good sunscreen. A sunscreen with a 50 to 60 SPF is usually recommended. Now, why do we say sunscreen? Because when the sunlight will fall onto your scar area, there is a high chance of the skin tanning. And if the tanning happens, the scar becomes more evident and cosmetically it does not look that good. So to avoid that, a sunscreen you can apply on a regular basis. Many people, especially women, are very concerned about the cosmetic appearance of the scar mark. So in that case, you can use a special kind of a band-aid like a silicone band-aid. So you can apply it over the area and this will also reduce the appearance of the scar mark. By the way, below in the description box, I have left couple of links which can be helpful if you have take, uh, undergone this surgery. Now, let's talk about 
a very commonly asked question can you take a bath or a shower after the surgery answer is yes see initially for one or two days it is advisable that you take a sponge bath and you just wipe the area with a warm water or a cold water so that there is a no chances of the wetness and the increased chance of infection but after that yes you can take a bath so when you talk about the bathing we have to take there are two ways of bathing either you take a shower or you sit in a bath tub and take a bath so avoid usage of the bath tub or swimming pool wherein your wound will be inserted into the water the more the wetness more the chances of a infection so yes a conventional shower is the advisable again when you take a bath shower make sure that you do not scrub or rub the area because it will again cause lot of irritation and after the shower make sure that you clean the area very well and you dry it properly so again this is very important now second common question is what you can eat after the surgery see thyroid surgery is not a major surgery in terms of a, you cannot eat certain foods yes you can resume eating all type of food very soon however for initial few days uh, it is advisable that you use a soft or a cold food okay easily digestible food so maybe you can have a vegetable soup you can have a chicken soup or you can have a lentil soup you can have a curd rice and you can also include lot of protein rich food like a yogurt or a cottage cheese see after the surgery your body needs lot of protein for the improvement and the recovery and for that you can also try to include protein powders in your diet okay so you can use all of that for the better recovery now another important element in a diet is a vitamin c and a zinc see vitamin c and a zinc they both are very important for the wound healing and a faster recovery so where do you get this vitamin c so all the citrus fruits like a lemon water then a gooseberry that's an indian avla then you can also get it from a, a orange juices you can include however make sure that if you are a diabetic try to avoid juices as much as possible vitamin c is also quite high in a guava but again many people have a difficulty in chewing after the surgery so guava can be hard at times certain vegetables like broccoli then bell peppers tomatoes spinach they all are again very high in a vitamin c and a zinc again you get a zinc higher in a legumes and a chicken also if you want you can also include a zinc supplement and that will also speed up the recovery if you are a diabetic make sure that whatever you eat you keep a note of that and make sure that your sugars are in a control range and if your sugars are going to increase you have to talk to your doctor you might need to modify your medication see when you have undergone a general anesthesia for the surgery and after the uh, surgery there is a stress creates and this stress itself increases the blood sugar level so you have to make a note of that you can also include lot of berries like a strawberries and a blueberries and a raspberries again they are high in antioxidant and helps in a faster recovery so these are the food items which you have to include try to avoid as much as a spicy and a masala food hydration is also very very important make sure that you have adequate amount of a fluid see when you have taken a pain medications so most of the time these medications creates a constipation and when you are constipated and if you try for the motion and bowel activities you can do a lot of exertion and which can create a trouble on your suture and a stitches so constipation should not be there and for that you need to have a adequate amount of water you can also include lot of fiber in your diet so again your bowel activities will be better now let's talk about the activity see you can resume your activity very soon however when you resume the activity try to avoid any kind of a strenuous body exercises like jumping or swimming in the uh, swimming pool try to avoid that restrict your neck movements 
Now these neck movements very commonly happen when you drive, either driving a car or even a riding a bicycle or a motorbike. There's a lot of neck movement, and this neck movement can also create an issue in your wound. Also, when you are taking a medications, many people have a lot of sedative effect of those medicine, and that can again put yourself in a dangerous situation if you are going to drive. Restrict uh, any kind of a physical and sexual activity for at least a week to ten days, again for the uh, suture and a better recovery purpose. Now let's talk about certain red flag symptoms which you need to keep a very close eye. So usually after the surgery, we advise a one to two day hospital stay. The major reason behind that is that during your hospital stay, your doctor and your nurse will keep a very close observation, and during this observation period, we will also watch out for these red flag symptoms. However, nowadays, due to uh, shorter hospitalization and a daycare procedure, many people opt out to take a discharge earlier. So, in that case, the observation becomes your sole responsibility. So, what are the possible complications can happen? By the way, I have made a separate video on a complication. You can watch that video so that you get a detailed information. What complications are minor and what complications are major? So, talking about the major and some life-threatening complications, which you need to pay a very close attention. So, suddenly, if you find that your wound is increasing in size, the redness is increasing, the pain is increasing, or the bleeding is more. When you empty the bulb, you see lot of fluid collected in that bulb, and you need to remove remove the fluid very frequently. This can be a watch out sign. If you find that you've got suddenly high grade fever, or if you, or you are having a, a chest discomfort or having a chest pain, you experience that your voice is changing. You're having difficulty in swallowing, difficulty in talking, difficulty in breathing. Or you're having a lot of persistent cough. This can again a important sign. Now after the surgery, there can be a calcium level imbalance, and due to that, you might experience some kind of a tingling, numbness around your lips and your mouth area. Again, this could be a major uh, complication. So if you have any such complication, you have to inform your doctor immediately. And based on your symptoms, your doctor might ask you for an urgent follow-up. So during your urgent follow-up, based on case to case, your doctor might even advise you to do certain blood tests to find out your calcium and vitamin D level. Your doctor might also ask you to undergo CT scan or ultrasonography to know the status of your complication. But yes, these are the major complications which you need to keep a close attention. Now let's talk about the follow up. So see, within a week after the surgery, the follow up is very very common. And during this follow up, your doctor might do a change of your wound dressing or the removal of the stitches. Long term follow up will also be important, and especially in that long term follow up, you will have to do a blood test. And there is a very high possibility that now your thyroid surgeon is going to refer you back to your endocrinologist doctor, the same doctor who treated your thyroid condition prior to the surgery, or it is the same doctor who in fact referred you to a thyroid surgeon that you are having this problem. Now you need to undergo a surgery, so you will have to go back to your endocrinologist doctor. Your endocrinologist doctor will do your blood test. To check your thyroid status, to check your PTH hormone status, to check your calcium and a vitamin D status, and based on that, the medication might be advised. If you have undergone a total thyroidectomy where your entire thyroid gland is removed, you have a very high possibility that your doctor will put you on a thyroid hormone replacement. And most of the time, these replacements can be a lifelong, and the doses requirement can also be comparatively higher. If you have undergone only a part of your thyroid surgery removal, then there is a possibility that you might not need a thyroid hormone replacement, or if at all you need the replacement, the dosage can be less. But again, it depends on case to case. And if you have undergone a kind of a thyroid cancer surgery, your follow up will be very different. You might have to undergo radiotherapy or another kind of a thyroid hormone replacement therapy. But again, it is a case dependent. All right. So I hope 
After watching this video, you got some good useful information and if you like the video, please don't forget to like the button. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you get more and more health related information. And if you have any of your personal question whose answer you are seeking for, please write it in the comment box. I try to read them and answer them as early as I can. And then there is a bell icon. If you click there as in when my new video will be published, you will get an instant notification. We will meet again with some new good useful information. Till then take care of yourself. Namaste.